Now you know just what you're in for. It is now time to explain to people just what's wrong with me. Yay! Enjoy this bone uh, episode of a killer being questioned by Dan Withers. This is the story of Joe. I forget, you're just gonna have to listen. So let's start the interview. I'm Dan Rathers, and I'm here with Joe Buckenstein, um, a mass murder serial killer. Uh, we're gonna ask that age-old question, uh, why did you do it? What, what made you, uh, come to the conclusion that this was your only option? Joe. Can you elaborate on any of your experiences out of the 2,700 people that you have killed over the last 17 years? Yeah, well, it's pretty simple. So what happened is, like, I just get in these fits of rage, you know, like, well, you know. Uh, let me just tell you from the beginning, my daddy was a truck driver, you know what I mean? Like, I would go around going toot-toot on the fucking horn, people wouldn't do it back, I got angry. I had some anger issues, I was growing up in a truck, I mean, he was feeding me pills and all this stuff, I didn't know, I thought it was vitamins, all I know is my muscles were growing, and it felt like I could lift, like, I don't know, a, a truck, which, funny story, side note, I did lift the truck one time. I mean, granted, it was on a forklift, but, and it was empty, and it was just a small box truck, but I did lift it up in the air. And I accidentally dropped it on a little old lady who was walking her dog into the, the store. It was a pet store. So, you know, 
shit happens, you know, that started my juvie extension, you know, I went through all these, uh, you know, like, all these places, and they're saying, like, you know, you're crazy, you know, we're not, we don't think, uh, you're safe to go back in society, you know, it's all bullshit, it's all horseshit, they were wrong, I turned out fine, yeah, I killed a couple people. Well, Joe... I'm sorry, uh, uh, what do you like to be called? Uh, Joe Bud, or M M Mr. Buckenstein. Um, uh, 1,700 people is not just a little bit. Oh, I did. Yeah, come on. Potatoes, potatoes. I mean, Hitler killed like a million. The guy who invented, like, stuff to make us better, you know, like something with atoms or, I don't know, he was smashing small stuff together. I mean, I seen the, I seen the thing on YouTube, so I'm pretty much like, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty smart now, you know, I watched that whole bit, I mean, you can ask me pretty much any question about the guy, I just don't remember his name. Oh, did you know he got a, uh, Nobel Peace Prize and his, his colleagues didn't show up? Well, I mean, well, like... They're not really your colleagues if they don't show up. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's just like people you know from going to work. I mean, it's no like difference from like in here and in, in prison. You know, like, you know, you walk out of your cell, you know, some guy looks at you funny and you start thinking all these thoughts, you know, normal thoughts like how could I snap his neck, maybe I put it in the bars, and then I'll just start fucking jamming the bar doors like, I am fucking smashing the skull and, you know, I like to see blood. But like I said, I think this was the young age when my uh, father was transporting all these uh, illegal immigrants and all these sex traffickers in the back of his truck for days without water. And I've seen so many dead bodies at this point. Hold on there, Dan. What was it, Dan? It, 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 it was Dan Rathers, yes. Yeah, well, you know, they called me Joe Buckenstein. Joe the, the Maniac Buckenstein. But, you know, I, I don't like that. I mean, you know, they could have came up with something better. So, uh, Joe, uh, the question I asked was, what really drove you to do it? Uh, what drove me? Um, let's see. Um, mm. uh, the main thing was being poor. Being poor kind of drove me. I mean, I had absolutely nothing. You know, my dad died. You know, um, he, he, you know, died in an accident in the, in the track, the trailer accident. 18 wheeler. He claimed to have 19 wheeler, but you know, nobody saw this other wheel. And, uh, you know, but, uh, he, 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 the, the autopsy said he died, you know, before impact because he was on, 
more cocaine and LSD than any one human should take. Yeah, basically, uh, I don't know. The cat was pulling him over and he had to get rid of it. You know, I tried to take as much as I could to help him out a little bit. But then I started blacking out, and the last thing I remember, I wake up, I'm in some kind of white room, my pants are unbuttoned, and I'm just looking around like, you know, who the fuck just killed my dad? You know, uh, did you ever uh, find or ever hear about what happened to the other driver? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I caught up with him like a couple years later. He had like a really big family, really good guy, you know. He didn't do anything wrong on his end. You know, uh, why are you winking at me? This is just a sit-down recording. There's no cameras. Oh, yeah, the wink was me like I, I, I fucking killed him. I, what I did was I stuck a whole bunch of drugs in his system and then I drove a tractor trailer right through his house. I don't know really how that tied into everything, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he got the picture. I never got to ask him, you know. Anyway, he wasn't home, but yeah, I killed everybody else, like his kids, his dogs, his cat, even at two hamsters, I fucking killed them. I don't know if they put that into the body count, but I mean, somebody was an asshole because, you know, like, they said I killed 1,700 people. I, I can only remember at least 14, 15, maybe, maybe 1,600. Well, Joe, that, that, that begs the question. What do you mean it begs the question? You've now have reached the part of the show where you must listen to this ad from Anchor. It could change your lives. <laughs> Who's begging me for a question? Shut up, I'm trying to have an interview. Uh, Joe, Joe, who, who are you talking to? It's those, the people standing around me, you don't see them? No, Joe, we, we don't see them. What do you see? Describe it to us. Ah, it's just a bunch of guys and, yeah, you know, women and dogs that I killed. They're all here just staring at me with weird faces. I don't know. Like, they look really angry. I don't know. I'm supposed to get, like, um... You know, be on death row and get the whole ejection thing, and I'm fucking looking forward to that, man. That looks like a fucking trip and a half. But, you know, they said the end result is I'm dead, so... I said I'm just gonna play crazy. <laughs> See how long I can get away in the system. Joe, you are in a mental institution. You're not on death row. Uh, the reason why you're here is because we're trying to figure out what caused you to uh, go overboard and do this. And you're not going to be executed in any way. 
don't know. <laughs> well, let me tell you there, uh, Dave. Yes, Dan. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I know. Alright, well, let me tell you there, Teddy. I got so many things right now. Just like you talking to me is making me so angry. I'm thinking about, I don't know. Taking these handcuffs, hopping over the table, and just strangling you. Yeah, I just, just want to see the life come out of you. But the problem is there. Then your spirit just lingers over in the corner, and you just get all mopey and mad. It's like, I mean, that ain't my fault, you know what I mean? Well, technically it is, sir. Uh, you, you, you killed all these people, Joe. You're saying you have no remorse. No, I don't know any, I don't know anybody anything. I, I paid all my, uh, my taxes. I don't own anybody any remorses. If I, if, I, if I owe them a remorse, I mean, they're going to have to send me some kind of paperwork. Um, Joe, I, w what do you think about um, normal stuff people think about? Uh, maybe like uh, pro-life adoption, stuff like that, you know? Pregnancy. What do you think about the the law? Rope versus weight. Oh yeah, yeah. I know those two guys. Yeah, they're they're in for a long time. Those guys are clowns. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I I don't I don't really know too much about them. You know, they're, they're not here, so I can't get to talk to them, and I'm only allowed to walk around in a cage for one hour a day. It's kind of weird though, right? Like, I'm in jail all day. It's like, <laughs> what, Joe? Joe, th this is not jail. This is an institution for the unwell. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a lot of unwell patients in here. It's fucking crazy in this place. But anyway, like I was saying there, Pat, they like to, like, I don't know, keep me in these cages and then, like, basically go outside and I'm in another cage. And then they give me this ball. No, no. You know, it's okay, though. I mean, the guy kept bringing me all these gifts, and he was giving me the basketball or a tennis ball, and he wanted, he's like, you know, enjoy your time while you have it. You know, you could be in here a very long time. When he told me this, I didn't know this at this point. When the judge said you got 25 consecutive counts of life, I thought maybe he was talking about the game. I won the game life, so I thought I was getting a prize. You know, maybe because, like, I was the first guy to ever single-handedly you know, take out all these Nazis. Fucking this. <laughs> the conversation continued, and it was just more and more and more. Um, we just couldn't understand him. I don't think he was in touch with reality at all. Hey, you guys doing the B-roll? Can I get in that? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, Joe. Hey, 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 come on over. This is Joe Buckenstein. He wants to be part of the B-roll. Yeah, I want to, I, yeah. Who has any of them? Any of what, Joe? Who has any B-roll? 
No, Joe, that's what we call in, in the show business, be raw white guy. I talk about what you're in for and what you may or may not understand. Oh, I get it, alright. I, yeah, I, un I understand, yeah. So you like talk to the camera before you talk to the camera. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. I mean, if we were outside and I wasn't handcuffed, I would just break your skull open for saying something stupid. Well, since I got here, Joe, one more last question. Yeah, I get shoot. Wait, I mean, don't shoot, but, yeah, you said you got a question. Yes, I have a question. May I ask it to you? I don't know, do I gotta do anything weird or sexual? No, no Joe, this is just, just a question I was gonna ask you. If you were to get out today, uh, what would you do? Oh, I would definitely probably murder the guy who killed my father. But Joe, your, your father killed the man. Because he was on so many supplements, and oh, I'm I'm just gonna be frank with you. Oh, really? I, Frank. Okay. All right. I thought your name was Pete, but all right, F uh, Frank, it is. I know that's uh, okay. Well, just I'm gonna be blunt with you. Blunt. <laughs> The good old days. There was the starting up days, the blunt, where you would just get blunt objects and just like see a pigeon and be like, I ruined my fucking day. <sighs> you know, because he woke me up out of a slumber. I was working hard those two hours, and then I came back to my box to rest. Yeah, that, uh, that, I mean, that, that's what we call our trucks. It's a box. You go in there, you, you know. Um, um, uh, yeah, d what was the question? Um, at this point, Joe was so out of it, they had to come in, <laughs> they had to come in and, <laughs> put this on the blooper reel. At this point, Joe was so out of it, they had to come and retain Joe, because he was getting so... I have really no other words, but he was getting so... Yeah, he, he was pretty fucking stupid, and this is why you don't go in to um, psych wards and make a TV show. What makes a murderer a murderer? I give you the quick, simple answer in my experience, because they're fucking crazy, and no amount of talking to them is going to make a difference, because everybody is unique, like a fingerprint. This is Dan Rathers, coming to you live from camp, we can do it, and uh... I just introduce you guys to the world's most special killer, Joe Buckenstein. Here's one more quote from Joe before we go. Alright, so anyway, I had this guy in a headlock, right? I was beating the shit out of him. You know, I was on so many, I was on so many pills and I was so cracked up. I mean, I was on coke, crack, I was on heroin, I was on Adderall, I was on methamphetamines, meth. I mean, I did the, the I, I mainlined accidentally, 
train of fluid just got, you know, the, those things can happen. No, it was supposed to be pure heroin, but it said, you know, Drano, and I just, just got the two mixed up. Anyway, I was headlocking this guy, and I was just cracking him in the skull with a fucking rock. And, and, and here it turns out it wasn't even the guy I was after. It was a woman. She was in her 80s. She dropped dead. But what I was told is that she was so scared she died right before I even came up to her and grabbed her. As soon as I put her in the headlock, I mean, I mean, but she was bulky. She had to be at least 5'9", maybe 86 pounds, 76 pounds. That's what they told me. But in my eyes, you know, because I wear glasses, I, you know, can't see that good. You know, uh, you know, from all the, um, you know, the penises I took in my eyes after the years in, 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 in prison. Yeah, you know, I've been in and out of the institution. Uh, I don't know. I just wind up just killing somebody by accident. And this quite, this happened a lot. I tried to tell the judge. But, uh, he didn't want to listen. This is... The next part, this is Joe in front of the judge trying to explain to Judge Summers that this was all a misunderstanding and we have a little bit of a little bit of it on tape. Let's take a listen. How does the defense played? I I I, I played like uh, shit. One, two, three, f four. I plead. I, I, yeah, I don't, uh, one sec. Let me ask my, t oh shit, I killed that guy too. Um, excuse me, sir. What do you plead? And who did you kill now? Oh, the guy, the attorney. Uh, Your attorney? No, the, yeah, the attorney guy. He said he was gonna reduce my sentence hearing or something. He basically said I didn't have to be here. And I, I gotta go score some crack. Anyway, uh, what was the question again? I'm pretty fucking high. I'm asking you, what do you plead? Oh, I plead, um, whoa, <laughs> can you hold on? I'm gonna look at my notes, you know, just to... See what I got here. One second, I'm getting, I'm getting my, my notes. You know, hey Judge, you don't mind if I smoke in here. You better not put on. You better not smoke that cigarette. All right. Ah, uh, yeah. Sir, what are you doing in my courtroom? Ah, I'm just rubbing one out until my eternalist gets here. Bailiff, get him the fuck out of here. Put him in the goddamn friend's hospital. Get him the fuck out of here. What is that? You guys want to get the fuck out of here? So do I. 
Ah, uh, hold on. I'm about to, uh... Uh-oh. Nah, that was it. I plead the 17th. This is Dan Rathers on 17 to 23 minutes with Joe Buckenstein, the craziest human being who has ever lived and still alive to talk about it. This was Joe's final comment as he died in his bed because he thought tying himself with the sheets of the bed with strangulation and to get off would be more fun. So here's the recording. Oh, fuck, I love this shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I just love it. I can't breathe, but I love it. Uh-oh, drop my spectacles. Uh-oh. I can't seem to... <laughs> I can't seem to take a breath. Hey, guard, can you grab that lighter for me and a, and a cigarette? I got no oxygen. Hey, if you want to get out of here, I'll, uh... Kill the guy who killed my dad. Wait a minute. Things are starting to feel better right now. Oh, okay. I can see that. I can see what people are talking about. Killing's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. But I have no regrets. And I don't know anybody any remorses, so... Worst comes to worst, I can I owe you him. I'll pay him back later. We'll stop at the bank. I got about thirteen dollars in there. That should cover it. And then, just like that, abruptly, the camera feed just went silent. Joe was by himself. There was no guard there. And suffocated to death because he decided not only was he going to hang himself he was going to go out the way he wanted to go out on his own terms because he thought he was in death row on death row and basically If you think this story is just remotely a little screwed up, turn around and look in the mirror, and then turn back around, look at everybody else, and then figure out what is what, and who is really fucked up, you or the system. This is Dan Rathers saying, this is it, for 17 to 24 minutes or whatever I named the show. What's up, guys? This is Jimmy James. Just one more thing. If you listen to me on this, Spotify, Anchor, any platform you're on right now, you can also follow me on YouTube, Twitter, whatever. Facebook, like I said, you could do it all. You can go on there, you can like me, you can hate me, you can dislike, approve, unapprove, whatever. Whatever you think I need to do to approve or to get your approval. That's all I'm looking for. That's all I care for. I just care for your approval. But for now, this is me just saying goodbye.
my world. Okay, Jim, I'll see you around. Where are you going? Oh, oh, no. Oh, that's not what I thought he meant by that at all. Goodbye, everybody.